morning. Everybody ready? Well, we want to welcome all of you to the Hayden Lake Seventh-day Adventist Church, and including those who are online as well. Um, you'll see by the bulletin that my new name is Thomas Nexu. Um, and I'm hoping, Thomas, that you're watching right now. Uh, Thomas called me and, and asked me to cover for him because apparently, and I could tell, his voice is kind of gone. So he thought it would be important to be able to speak. And so uh, he asked me to do that for him. So we're happy that everybody's here, not only within our sanctuary, but also those of you that are watching online or possibly by recording. So we have a few things that we normally do as we uh, begin this time together. And one of the first things, of course, is to remind you that if you have a cell phone, please make, make sure it doesn't make any noise during our church service. We appreciate that. All of us appreciate it very much when that does not happen. Um, also, I, I seem to be remiss about this uh, several times when I get up here, and that's the fellowship meal that occurs after our church service today. So we want to welcome all of our guests and our members to the fellowship meal after our church service today. So please remember that. Another thing that we always talk about are the communication card. That's this yellow one. It says communication card up on top. Please take a look at that should you have a need to, uh, believe it or not, communicate with our pastor or any, any of us here. Prayer requests, uh, transfer of membership, um, it's just a, a simple way to communicate with our church leadership. Another thing that um, I'm thinking about, I was thinking about this morning, is the word gratitude and how important gratitude is in our lives. I was speaking with somebody this morning, and he was bemoaning something um, that shall remain unsaid. But he was bemoaning, and I, and I thought, um, you know, gratitude would be good for him to have at this point. Instead of uh, dwelling on what he doesn't have, to dwell on what he does have. And how fortunate he, uh, he is, how fortunate we all are, should we decide to have an attitude of gratitude? And one way we can express that is with our, our, our white encouragement cards. We could call them gratitude cards now. Um, if, there's, if there's somebody that, has, um, that you see that is, is giving themselves in service, something that you appreciate here in our church family, then let them know. It's very important to let them know. I took some of these cards home with me and uh, put them out so I could remember to, to fill one out. I would like to make it a, a habit every week. So far, I've been remiss on that. But uh, anyway, join me in being better about showing gratitude here in our church family. Um, now we also have some inserts. We have the communion with God. Taking a look at this, this is an excellent thing to read every week and keep up with every week. We also have the reading through the Bible schedule and those who are out in the lobby if you don't happen to have one with you. You don't need it with you, but if you happen to have one at home um, and you know where it is, that's good. If not, we have some more. Now, we also have this insert that's talking about a spring cleanup. And that is four weeks from now, or actually four weeks from tomorrow. It'll be on the 28th of April. But I want to say this. I got a call this week because uh, we have a newly formed committee in our church. It's called the Landscape Committee. And my wife and I are on that committee. And so somebody gave me a call and said, Anne Sile is that somebody. She called me and said uh, she had been checking out these 
spirea plants, the kind of dead looking bushes that are out in front of our church. And those really should be cut down to about a foot every year, every fall. However, she talked to somebody who was in the, in the know about those plants and they can be cut down uh, within about a week, but that gives us tomorrow. And so we'd like to have people, as many people as possible, show up here at 927 in the morning. Did you notice that in the bulletin? If you haven't, you'll see 927. If you're here at 928, you're late. But that's okay. You'll be welcomed. Uh, so 927 tomorrow morning. Now, we also have men's uh, group tomorrow, men's Bible study prayer group tomorrow. They will be joining us immediately after that uh, study that they have. So uh, we will uh, plan on, on having a lot of people here to help us cut down these spirea plants to about a foot. Did people bring anything? Oh, yeah. So uh, bring tools, bring trimmers. I've got an electric chainsaw I'm going to use just in case I get an opportunity to use that. I always look for opportunities to use a chainsaw. I don't know that that's the right tool for that job, <laughs> but we're sure going to make a good try. <laughs> See if it will be. <laughs> hedge trimmers. Yep, yep. Those kind of clipper things. Oh, yeah, an electric chain, uh, chainsaw. <laughs> an electric hedge trimmer would be a really good thing to have if you have one of those. Also, uh, big old trash bags to put our stuff in that we cut off. So please remember to do that. If you can, be here tomorrow. Now, it's off and on. It's been predicting rain, snow, a combination. Uh, I, I just checked downstairs before coming up and no rain or snow is projected for tomorrow morning so we're going to hold them to that and uh, so come and and join us it's uh, just 9 27 to noon we hope to be done pretty quickly so i've spent a lot of time on that because i have a vested interest in this <laughs> in this uh, landscape committee so we will now have uh, our singing time and we'll be looking forward to our presentation by Wayne Garrison. Well, I'm grateful this morning. <laughs> grateful for the chance to sing with you and grateful that I have the blessed assurance that Jesus is mine. It's hymn 462. Let's sing together, blessed assurance. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight. Visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending bring from above echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I and my Savior am happy and blessed. 
Watching and waiting, looking above, filled with his goodness, lost in his love. Oh, this is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Another song I love to hear you sing. Another song I'm grateful for. 100, Great is Thy Faithfulness. This is a great hymn. Sing with me hymn number 100, Great is Thy Faithfulness. <clears throat> Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not, thy compassions they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever wilt be. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning new mercies I see. All I have needed thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Summer and winter and springtime and harvest, sun, moon, and stars in their courses above. Out and all nature in manifold witness to thy great faithfulness, mercy, and love. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning new mercies I see. All I have needed thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. This is my favorite verse. Pardon for sin and strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. Pardon for sin and a peace that endureth. Thine own dear presence to cheer and to guide. Strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. Blessings all mine with ten thousand beside. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning new mercies I see. All I have needed thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. All I have needed thy hand hath provided. Let's close our hymn time with hymn 495. Near to the heart of God. <clears throat> There is a place of quiet rest near to the heart of God, a place where sin cannot molest, near to the heart of God. O oh, Jesus, blessed Redeemer, Sent from the heart of God, oh 
Hold us who wait before thee, near to the heart of God. There is a place of comfort sweet, near to the heart of God, a place where we, our Savior, meet, near to the heart of God. O Jesus, blessed Redeemer, send from the heart of God. Hold us who wait before thee, near to the heart of God. One more precious verse. There is a place of full release, near to the heart of God. A place where all is joy and peace, near to the heart of God. O oh, Jesus, blessed Redeemer, send from the heart of God. Hold us who wait before thee, near to the heart of Very good songs we've had so far. Yes. Wonderful songs. It's time for our invitation to worship. I feel take your bulletin out, or we're going to have it on the screen as well. It's on the inside of the first page, invitation to worship. We have the honor now to read together from God's word. Now, therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Ephesians 2, 19 and 20. Amen. Enjoyed hearing you read together. Hymn number 661 is our prayer song. Would you kneel as we sing together? Holy, holy, holy. <clears throat> holy, 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 holy is the Lord. Holy, 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 holy. Our God, He who always liveth, evermore the same, heaven and earth He ruleth. Come and praise Him. Father, we thank you for this Sabbath day. Father, we thank you for bringing us here safely. <clears throat> Pray for those who are still on the way or who are watching on the internet. Father, grant us all your Sabbath day blessing. Teach us more about you today. Grant us your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 <clears throat> Come and praise his name. As you stand to your feet, we're going to sing our opening song this morning, Faith is a Victory. This always happens at faith camp. Feels like that's coming up. Hymn 608, Faith is the Victory. <clears throat> Encamped along the hills of light, ye Christian soldiers rise and press the battle ere the night shall veil the glowing skies. Against the foe in veils below, let all our strength be hurled. 
Faith is the victory we know that overcomes the world. Faith is the victory. Faith is the victory. Oh, glorious victory that overcomes the world. On every hand the foe we find drawn up in dread array. Let tents of ease be left behind and onward to the fray. Salvation's helmet on each head with truth all girt about. The earth shall tremble neath our tread and echo with our shout. Oh, faith is the victory, faith is the victory. Oh, glorious victory that overcomes the world. To him that overcomes the foe, white raiment shall be given. Before the angels he shall know, his name confessed in heaven. Then onward from the hills of light, our hearts with love aflame, will vanish all the hosts of night in Jesus' conquering name. Faith is the victory, faith is the victory, oh, glorious victory that overcomes the world. Amen. Be seated. We'll be taking up our offering at this time. Today's offering is for our local church budget. We have a basket in front. Young people will be passing throughout to collect money for the Worthy Student Fund that we support. We have a building fund that we support also, which is a matching fund. It's $100,000 and we've got approximately $16,000 toward that already. We need to remember our radio fund also Today's offering goes to our local church budget. In order to keep our church ministries functioning, we depend on generosity of members such as you to give a, a faithful offering to support our local church budget. There will be a children's story immediately after the offering is taken up. This time I'll have the prayer. Lord, we thank you that we can return our tithes and offerings. We ask that you'd guide and direct them for their intended use. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
Morning. Does anyone here have chickens? You do? Used to? I have a story today about chickens. Do you think that God can use chickens? God can use anything and anyone, can't He? I want to tell you a story about a chicken farmer on the island of Manduro. He had a bunch of chickens, but he had a problem. His chickens weren't laying eggs. Is that a problem? Yeah. So he talked to his friends to see what he should do, and they told him to call a chicken expert. And so he called, <laughs> he called a chicken expert, and the chicken expert came out, and he looked over all of his pens, and he looked over all of his chickens to see why they weren't laying eggs. And what do you think he came up with? He said the chickens were stressed. Can you believe that? Conditions in the world are stressing everything, even our animals now. He said the chickens were stressed, and he had an answer. Get a radio, get multiple radios, and put them around the chicken pen, and turn them on and let the chickens listen to music. And so that's what the, that's what the farmer did. The chicken expert said that if he did that, that the chickens would lay more eggs. So the farmer went and bought some radios. He put them all around the different chicken coops, and he turned them all on. And what do you think happened? It was a disaster. The chickens stopped laying eggs altogether. And so the farmer wasn't sure what to do. He went back to the chicken expert and he said, I need you to come back out. It's not working. So the chicken expert came back out and he was listening to the music, to the rock music. And he said, it's stressing the chickens more. You need to change the channel. And so the farmer changed the channel and he's listening and he's flipping through the channels. And he found one called Adventist World Radio. And on Adventist World Radio, they were playing a lot of music. He said, this sounds like a good channel. I think we're going to try this one. So he left it playing. And what do you think happened? Chicken started laying eggs. But as we would have it, there was a problem. Because shortly after they started listening to the music, Adventist World Radio put Cami Ootman on, and she did a Revelation seminar. And there's not much music in a Revelation seminar. What do you think the chickens did? The chickens actually increased their egg production. They liked hearing God's word, and li they liked hearing Cammie's voice. And so the chickens started laying even more eggs, and the farmer was really happy. But that's not the end of the story, because while we think of one thing, and we're worried about chickens and eggs, God is worried about so much more. And along with the chickens listening to Cammie Ootman's series, guess who else was listening? The farmer. And the farmer heard something he had never heard before. To make a long story short, the farmer gave his heart to God and he was baptized. And he's now a follower of Christ. So is it that good? Amen. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Father, we know that you can use anything, anywhere, anytime. Father, we ask that you would use us, teach us more about you, and help us to be faithful in your service. And help us not to forget the little things and to follow wherever you lead. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You can go back to your seats. Thank you, Wayne. I love chicken stories. Well, now, again, we have the honor of opening God's Word for our scripture reading. I'll be reading from Luke 4 and verses 18 through 19. Um, that is on page 1014 if, you're, if you have the Pew Bible and you'd like to use that as a reference. So it's uh, page 1014, Luke 4, 18 through 19. And this is Jesus speaking. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are bruised, and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word.
morning, church family. Good morning. Isn't it good to be in God's house? It's good to see each and every one of you. Good to see you, brother. See a lot of familiar faces. We enjoy visiting in this church. It looks a lot different from this side. I pray that this morning that you will hear God speaking and that you will receive a blessing from having been here this morning. We are living in exciting times when the gospel is to go to all the world. And there's no doubt that Jesus is soon to come and break the clouds. And I look forward to that day. It's a privilege to be alive right now with such tremendous developments taking place around the world. I don't know about you, but a little spiritual food I think is good. In this day and time, there's so much stuff on our phones. I want to tell you about two apps real quick before we start. The first one you see is AWR360. It has, um, you can watch some of the stories I'm going to tell you today. You can have Bible studies on there. Earth's Final Countdown is on there. Um, Unlocking Bible Prophecies, podcasts. You can even submit prayer requests. So this is one that I like just for a general app. The other ones you see, AWR Live, when you're traveling in a vehicle or when you're sitting at the house. And you guys have a good radio station. If you want something else to listen to, this one here has 16 different languages on it and it has 35 different stations on this AWR Live. There's one called Faith FM out of Australia that I love to listen to. So I highly recommend these two apps. If you forget what they are, ask us at the table and we'll tell you about those again and you can, you can sign up for those. Revelation 14.6 tells us the everlasting gospel is to be preached to every nation, kindred, and tongue, and people. God is going to use you, friends, to share in this greatest revival the world has ever witnessed. Thank you for your partnership with Adventist World Radio as we push new boundaries and cross new borders the globe over with God's last day message. This morning I'll be sharing incredible stories about transformed army generals, assassins, and baptisms in countries where minds were thought to be closed off from the gospel, plus attempted murders where God miraculously intervened. So let's take a moment and pray and ask God again to come and join us as we... As we talk this morning. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this Sabbath day. Father, we thank you that you are alive and well, that you are working each and every day, that your hand of protection is over us. Father, I ask today that you would clear my mind, that you would give me the thoughts and words to share with your children, that you would teach me as you teach your children. Help us to receive a blessing from this message today and help us to learn more about you Help us to have a closer relationship with you and to realize that faith in you is the victory and that your plans are much bigger than ours. It's going to take us out of the comfort zone, but that you have plans and that we can be a part of it. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for hearing and answering our prayers according to your will and what's best for our eternal salvation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our message today is about standing firm in the battle. In a very special way, God has called the Seventh-day Adventist Church to give His final message of mercy and love to a perishing world. For over 50 years, Adventist World Radio has been on the front lines of this spiritual battle to bring hope through Jesus to millions of souls. There is a war that is going on. It started in heaven, but that war has brought itself to this world. It started, um, and we know that this war will intensify until all the power of the enemy will be brought to bear upon the remnant church of God. But we need not fear, because God has already promised us victory, and we are seeing God's amazing power working through the efforts of Adventist World Radio. What a breakthrough we witnessed in Ghana. With over 20 years of broadcasting with minimal results, we decided to change our strategy and be more aggressive to putting greater trust in God's ability and power. We used 10 different radio stations in one of the most difficult areas while broadcasting in 12 different cities with loudspeakers proclaiming the gospel of the three angels' message. Tremendous interest was awakened and many Bible studies were requested from the follow-up. The results were astounding. More than 10,000 baptisms with nearly 5,000 from the loudspeakers alone. These loudspeakers are also put into a marketplace, so as you shopped, you heard the three angels' message. (laughs) Praise God. It's not just in Ghana. God is using AWR to reach thousands across Africa. 
the Lusaka for Christ evangelistic campaign in the country of Zambia was an AWR initiative that brought Andrews University students, seminary students, to be soul winners for Christ. The purpose was to inspire them to fall in love with evangelism and carry that same mission spirit back to their churches in North America. 21 evangelistic series were held across Lusaka with 13, 1,335 baptisms. As a result, praise God. It's not about the numbers, friends. What's God's favorite number? One. He walked many a mile for one. If we get more than that, praise God. The number we are looking for by God's grace is one. Not only were there more than 1,300 baptisms, but a local Pentecostal pastor named Joseph heard about the meetings and decided to attend. Each night, the speaker made appeals to accept biblical truth, and Joseph would respond to the call and come down. He even accepted the Sabbath. Praise God. That's a tough one for people. Though it was a challenging situation to be rebaptized, he decided on the second to last night to make his stand for Jesus and his truth. He was baptized with seven of his former Pentecostal members. Amen? This, friends, God has an amazing sense of humor. If you don't know that, you need to get to know him better because God has a sense of humor. During that same series, the seminary students would conduct practice sermons during the day to work on their appeals. While Benji, this is Benji, was practicing his appeal, a local resident named Thompson was discreetly listening from the back of the room and decided to come forward for baptism. Isn't God good? Benji was practicing and yet he was putting his heart in it and God was there. And this young man saw God and decided he wanted to join God. I say amen. He went on to attend the nightly meetings and was baptized along past, alongside Pastor Joseph and joined the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Another moving story in Lusaka was a 75-year-old man named John who was bedridden due to a stroke. His desire to hear the gospel led his family to make it possible for him to listen to the meetings from his bed. The truth made sense to him. And on the final Friday of the series, John had a dream that he had a baptismal card in his hand. The next morning, he decided to be baptized. His family put him in the car, and he said, I would rather die than not to be baptized. The freedom and joy on John's face at his baptism was all the evidence of how God can touch someone's heart. Friends, when you see someone going through that much trouble, some people would say, why? Why is he doing that? And my question is, what has he found? What is worth all that effort? What is worth all that risk? Does he know something we don't? Does she know something we don't? As a ministry, Adventist World Radio is on the front lines. We believe God can do above all that we ask or think. As we face uncertain challenges and opposition from the enemy, I want to share with you today three simple ways in which God has called us as a church to finish the work so Jesus can come. Number one, know our mission. Know what our mission is. I praise God that this church still knows what our mission is. We have a message to take to the world. What is our mission? Without a mission, an army loses its sense of purpose and motivation. God has clearly given us a mission. This mission is found in Isaiah 28. If you have your Bibles, I encourage you to open them up. Isaiah 28, verses 5 and 6. Isaiah 28. Verses 5 and 6. In that day shall the Lord of hosts be for a crown of glory and for a diadem of beauty unto the residue of his people and for a spirit of judgment to him that sitteth in judgment and for strength to them that turn the battle to the gate. The phrase in that day is often referenced as a prophetic expression of the last days. The word residue comes from the word remnant. The Lord is going to be the glory and beauty of His remnant church. Do you believe that? Amen. Amen. Verse 6 says, He shall give strength to them that turn the battle to the gate. This is what our mission is. Jesus knew what His mission was, and we need to know what our mission is. Friends, while Jesus said this, our scripture reading, if we are doing God's work, does he say this for us also? Don't take this lighthearted. 
We have a work to do, and God is behind us. He is backing us up, and He has work for us to do. He said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because He hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of the sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Isn't that our job also? That is our mission also? Our mission in these last days is to turn the battle to the enemy's gates. We are to press forward in areas and countries that are in darkness, bringing the light of Jesus Christ into the most remote areas of the world. This is the very heart of the work that AWR is committed to. With God's unmistakable leading, we launched Christ for Europe in cooperation with the General Conference's total member involvement. This was one of the largest events across Europe. We have to quit doing things as we've always done them. We're not getting very far. We need to ask God what His plans are. And I'm going to tell you, they're going to take you out of your comfort zone. Bigger. These meetings were organized across three divisions, 30 unions, and 38 countries. That's something that only God can do. From Iceland to Turkey, and included 1,530 different evangelistic sites. The conversions and testimonies and miracles are nothing short of amazing. The people of the war-torn country of Ukraine were so excited. People were desperate to hear about Jesus. Prior to the meetings, Adventist World Radio began preparing the soil through a project called AWR 360 on the Move. This truck, this outreach included a semi-truck that continued to visit villages hardest hit by the war to serve the spiritual and physical needs of the people. This truck was procured, was bought during a time of war. This truck was assembled during a time, during COVID and during a time of war. When we couldn't buy even the simplest supplies, God was providing a truck and providing equipment for this to visit the different, different places in Ukraine. So far, more than 237 baptisms have resulted in evangelism in Ukraine. Praise God. In a time of war, people's greatest needs come to the forefront. AWR wants to be on the front lines to bring health and spiritual healing. God's army of soul winners is on the move in Iceland. A small church of willing workers invited AWR evangelist Louis Torres to train them to reach their community. Though told, reportedly, though told repeatedly that door-to-door -door evangelism doesn't work here, the church decided to knock on doors. I've heard that, I've been told that, but guess what? When you knock on the doors, it works. Pray, and God will show you the doors to knock on. It works. Praise God, many people were invited to come out to the series. At the conclusion, a call was made for baptism, and 36 people followed Jesus into the water for baptism. Amen. One of the visitors was Rebecca. She was invited to opening night. However, she had plans to catch a different bus. Rebecca was headed to the local pub with friends. As she waited for the bus to arrive, conviction set in. Her prayer was, Lord, whatever bus arrives first, that's the one I'll get on. Go ahead and make those deals with God. Whichever door you want me to go through, God, open that door. I'll go through it. She got on the bus, hopped on. The bus took her to the local church instead of the pub, as if there was any, any doubt. Rebecca attended every night after that and sealed her decision for Christ in baptism. If we just have a willing heart to follow Jesus, God will send His angels to direct our paths, even if it's just getting on the wrong bus. Let's turn in our Bibles to Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16. Verses 16 through 18. Jesus was walking the coast of Caesarea Philippi, and his disciples, and to his disciples, he said, What do men say that I am? As they all gave their answer, Peter said, Thou art Christ, the Son of the living God. Matthew 16, 16 through 18. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee, thou, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And unfortunately the gates of hell did prevail against Peter. 
not against the rock, not against Christ, who is the Son of God. Gates are defensive weapons, but God's church is on the offense. The gates of hell will not prevail against a church that is moving forward with God's power to change lives and save people from the enemy's power. AWR is on the front lines of evangelism in the Philippines. There is so much going on. I wish I could share everything with you. I just can't, but we're going to see just a little bit here. The gates of the enemy were brought down when rebel assassins heard broadcasts from Adventist World Radio and decided to lay down their weapons and end the warfare with their fellow man. Fifty-plus year war ended because of one thing, God and the Bible. It will, the Bible and God will end any conflict that you and I have, that countries have, that groups have. We need God and we need the Bible. Rebel generals who were once carried weapons to kill now carried the word of God and entered the Lord's army of love and peace. Many of them are now holding their own evangelistic series. Can you say amen? How awesome is that? In villages where they used to recruit rebel soldiers. Watch this amazing testimony of Gilbert. Gilbert was their number one assassin. He was the, he was the enforcer. And I want you to show, to show you the power of God and what he can do. Deep in the jungle of the war-torn mountains on the island of Minduro lives Gilbert. He is one of the leaders of the New People's Army terrorist group. These mountains have been plagued with vicious warfare for more than 50 years. As the skirmishes raged around me, I feared no one. The mountains were my home, and I knew to move through them, leaving no trace. Many times he would be the bait that started an ambush. Any time an enemy set foot into Gilbert's territory, they were in grave danger. He was one of the most feared assassins in the region. He was extremely strong and often would single-handedly carry injured men through the jungles to safety. Through his success and bravery, the leader of the New People's Army, Commander Martin, began to take notice. Soon they became close partners and together they were unstoppable. But then one day, some of the men around him started to talk about Adventist World Radio and how they were beginning to learn about Jesus. As they continued to listen to the messages of God's love and forgiveness, many of his troops decided to surrender, leaving their old life of killing behind. Gilbert heard that as his men surrendered, they had been given amnesty. This surprised Gilbert because his men were assassins and killers, and he did not understand this kind of forgiveness. Whenever he got a chance, Gilbert would descend from the mountains to visit his wife. One day while at home, he decided to listen to AWR and see what all of his men were talking about. The program that played was a family series, and my wife and I really enjoyed what we heard. As he headed back up into the mountains, he got the biggest shock of his life. He heard Commander Martin, the leader of the whole NBA, was going to surrender. And he was encouraging all members to surrender too. This really troubled Gilbert as warfare and killing was all he had ever known. He thought about his past and his fights and what it all meant. He had hurt many people for what he thought was the truth. But he started to question if it was all a lie. He found that the more he learned about Jesus, the more peace he felt. He heard that Jesus helped others and wanted his followers to do the same. Gilbert knew he couldn't live both his former and his new life.
So together with his wife, he made a decision. He told her he felt that Jesus had asked him to surrender the fight, as well as his heart. Early spring of 2021, Gilbert walked into the water with Pastor Robert July and was baptized. Gilbert has finally surrendered to Jesus and is a changed man. Then, on May 2021, the NPA leaders signed the official surrender document that ended the terrorist group. It was a time for healing and peace. In the past, I may have feared no one, but there was also no peace in my heart. Today, instead of warfare and killing, I work on a farm and I am sharing the new messages of peace and love that I have learned through Adventist World Radio. All around the world, there are many more who need to hear the message of peace and forgiveness. AWR is working tirelessly to spread the good news of Christ's soon return. Won't you join us with your faithful prayers and support? The work of Adventist World Radio is truly making a difference. Stories like these spur us on. Partner with us in broadcasting the gospel around the world. This is AWR 360. That is only the power of God. And friends, whether you realize it or not today, everyone, including you here, is looking for one thing. We are looking for truth. And truth can only be found in God's Word. And when you find it, you will have a peace like never before. The world needs truth. In this day and time, we question everything except the Bible. It is truth. It's a blank check that you can take to Heaven's Bank, and you can cash these checks on Heaven's Bank for God's honor and glory. There are many more Gilberts out there waiting to surrender to the Spirit of Christ. And I dare say that there's Gilberts right here in Hayden Lake that need to be reached. Who's going to go? Who can God send? Will you say to God, send me? Teach me. Send me. Whether it's here, whether it's somewhere else. There is no limit to God's transforming power. Gilbert's testimony brings us to our second point of success as AWR advances to bring down the gates of heaven. What was our first one? Know what our mission is. The second one is to know what our marching orders are. To know what our marching orders are. Let's turn in our Bibles to Ephesians 6, verse 10 through 13. By the way, if we join God's army, we serve a commander who has never lost and who will not lose. There are times the battle comes against us. It will not look good, but God does not lose. Ephesians 6, verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Verse 13, Wherefore take up unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. You remember a guy named Goliath? Did Goliath have armor? He had all of his armor on, did he not? Why did he fall? He moved some. And in God's battle and God's warriors, we need to put all the armor on and not remove it. Amen? Amen. Our marching orders are to take the whole armor of God, to stand firm in the battle. What is the armor of God that we are to take with us? Let's continue reading in verses 14 through 17. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of what? Peace. Does the world need some peace today? Amen. Like never before. 
16. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. We are to go forward with God's truth, putting on the breastplate of righteousness, our feet prepared with the gospel of peace, taking the shield of faith and the helmet of salvation. And last but not least, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. The armor and weapons that God gives us are useful to those who are on a fence. These are not defensive weapons. We are going to the forefront of God's mission. Join us as AWR is advancing through the darkest strongholds to bring the light of the world, the light of the Word of God to the most difficult places. When it comes to places that are difficult to enter, the message of God is still, of God's love, is still able to penetrate into the most challenging area of the Word through our God pods. This is a God pod. You're going to see one there. I'll show you this one later. My wife has one at the table that you can look at. God pods are little solar-powered, pre-recorded audio players. On these little devices, we load the entire audio Bible, sermons, Ellen White's writings, health programs, and materials for children, and more. This is one of the things that Gilbert takes back up into the mountains to the other rebels. And by the way, that was in Mindoro. The Philippine government was so impressed with what God had done that they said, we have a base in Mindanao. We're going to give you the corner of that base, and we want you to build an antenna, and we want you to point it up at those rebels. And praise God, I think it was in December they had their first baptisms. I think they had about 12 or 13 baptized there. But guess who the ones going up there doing the preaching are? The former rebels. They call them fully reconciled. Are they fully reconciled? Amen. God is using them in a mighty way. And it's encouraging and strengthening their faith as they go forward. To charge a God pod, you just set it in the sun as it's solar powered. God pods are given to people in remote villages where there is no electricity. They're also given to people who live in places where there is no radio signal. AWR also shares them with people who are illiterate and with prisoners who have no other source of hope in their daily life. They're also being loaded and they're being pushed to the front, to the front lines of Ukraine and Russia. And at different times and at different gas stations, they're meeting the soldiers going to the front line and they're sharing these God pods with them. And nobody is turning them down. AWR has a center for digital evangelism staffed by young people on fire for God. It was established to help connect AWR's listeners from broadcast to baptism. Thousands are learning the truth and connecting with the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Dedicated young people are taking a year from, from their busy lives and becoming missionaries in the Philippines, where AWR's flagship center for digital evangelism is located. They answer people's Bible questions, they pray for them, and they invite them to online Bible studies and... They connect these precious people with local churches for follow-up and baptism. Sometimes it takes a while to get in contact with the pastor, especially if the church looks like the one with the palm trees behind it. I believe you guys share your pastor with another church. If only the ones in the Philippines had two churches. It's a long time between the, the seeing the pastors there. But God is all about connecting the dots from broadcast to baptism. And He opens the doors to connect these precious people with a local Adventist church where they will continue to hear the truths of the Bible. Another avenue of ministry that AWR uses, nearly everyone has in their pocket, a cell phone. Thousands of Adventists have signed up to be cell phone evangelists. Their work involves sending out audio evangelistic presentations to friends and family who perhaps do not know the truths of the Bible. These services are live streamed. Any one of you who talks with someone during the week can say, you know, I heard this really good message on Sabbath, whatever it is. And you can simply text a link to it. If you're on Facebook, you can put a link on there. You can be a cell phone evangelist. Use this technology that God has given us to share His Word with others. AWR also advertises for new interests. Each evangelist is trained on how to be a good friend, answer Bible questions, pray for people, and, and mentor the students as they form a relationship with Jesus. One of the most influential books about the spiritual warfare happening around us is The Great Controversy. 
I know you guys know that because we sat in Sabbath school class probably a year ago when we were going through the great controversy here. It's an awesome book. The last 10 chapters, I would tell you, are happening right now around us. If ever there was a book that was important, it's the great controversy, and it's now. AWR is in the process of printing more than 270,000 custom books to be distributed in the Philippines, the United States, and Papua New Guinea. Ellen White stated that these books, out of all her books she had written, this was the book that most needed to be in the homes in these last days. This is the full book. The only thing that's been added to it is that little QR code. And at the end of a couple of the different chapters, we have two books, I think, available today that we're going to share with two people. Those little QR codes will take them either to Bible studies, it will connect them to the, to the centers where they can follow up and they can find a church. Nothing has been added, nothing has been taken away from it. It is the full book, which I encourage you to share. We believe the literature work is also of vital importance to get God's message out. With 2.3 million unlocking Bible prophecy tracts distributed throughout Rwanda and 6, 600,000 village witch tracts in 15 different languages, the message of God's love and truth is spreading like the leaves of autumn. Please keep this work in your prayers. We have these tracks on the back table that we're going to give you some that you can pass out. And again, it looks a lot like a glow track, but it has a QR code in there. And that QR code will lead them to Bible studies. It will lead them to people that will pray for them and different things like that. It's a way to connect to them where they can follow up for more resources. From the small island of Guam, AWR can reach over one-third of the world with shortwave radio. AWR is very focused and passionate about spreading the gospel to the world. And so as many people as possible will be saved when Jesus comes. Is that your desire too? It's not going to be enough to be there when Jesus comes back. Jesus is not selfish. We need to have others there. And while we're born into an earthly family, we get to pick our heavenly family. Reach out to these people that you meet day after day. Tell them about Christ. Tell them about His soon coming. Tell them He has plans for them and plans for you. Through AM, FM, digital audio broadcasting, internet radio, shortwave radio, God has worked miracles to reach people. If you haven't heard, I'm sure from your radio station you will be hearing that it wasn't possible to reach where it did. But I heard a message and I have a question. Now, I don't know how they do it, but the angels will stretch that signal and people that need to hear these messages will hear it. Our job, by God's grace, is to get it up and to pray for it. That God will stretch it to who He wants to hear it. And it will begin to work. God is very much in the business of miracles. There's so much more that we could share about God's doing through Adventist World Radio. It is so humbling and yet exciting to, get, to see God's power at work in such a miraculous way. These stories and testimonies are so inspiring. They show God's, that God is still at work more than ever, and we are privileged to be a small part of finishing the work of the gospel so Jesus can come soon. So number one is what? Know what our mission is. Number two is to know what our marching orders are. Can anybody guess what number three is? Victory is assured in Christ. In the Song of Solomon, chapter 6, verses 10 through 13, we find a climatic prophecy of God's last day remnant church and the final victory that she will face, that she will have as she is faithful to her divine mission. Let's go to Song of Solomon, chapter 6. Song of Solomon, chapter 6, verses 10 through 13. I love to hear the pages turn. Who is she that looketh forth as the morning, fair as the moon, clear as the sun, and terrible as an army with banners? I went down into the garden of nuts to see the fruits of the valley, and to see whether the vine flourished, and the pomegranates budded. Or ever I was aware, my soul made me like the chariots of Aminadab. Return, return, O Shulamite, return, return, that we may look upon thee. What will ye see in the Shulamite? as if it were the company of two armies. A similar prophecy of a woman clothed with the sun and moon under her feet is found in Revelation 12, verse 1.
This is the church of God advancing from the birth of Christ through the climax of human history. As the dragon is wroth or angry with the church, he attempts to make war with her. She is faithful to the testimony of Jesus Christ and keeps his commandments. In Solomon's prophecy, she had the banner of Prince Emmanuel, God with us. The fruits of the valley are the fruits of the Spirit. And in verse 12, we have the chariots, an army that is like Aminadab, which means a willing people, willing to follow God. Does God have a willing people in this church today? Amen. Are we willing to give ourselves to God for the advancement of His kingdom of love? Amen. Notice what Ellen White says about the prophecy of God's church. This is from Acts of the Apostles, page 90.2. If you want to know how a church should run, the book is called Acts. It's a beautiful example of a church. The workbook that goes with that is a beautiful book called Acts of the Apostles. And it will have more information to go with the textbook. So long as they remained united, the church would go forth fair as the moon, clear as the sun, and terrible as an army with banners. Song of Solomon 6.10 Nothing could withstand the onward progress. The church would advance from victory to victory, gloriously fulfilling her divine mission of proclaiming the gospel to the world. Acts of the Apostles, page 90. Can you say amen? Praise God. The same word is found in Genesis chapter 32, verses 1 and 2, where Jacob wrestled with the angel. As his brother Esau was upon him and about to take his life, God opened Jacob's eyes to see the army of heavenly angels ready to deliver him. The Bible says, And Jacob went on his way, and the angels of God met him. And when Jacob saw them, he said, This is God's host. And he called the name of the plaque, called the name of the place Menahim. Dear friends, God has commissioned a second army of heavenly angels to help and to protect us as we move forward. Though you may not see it, if those angels weren't there, Satan would take us out. There's a whole army there. Don't doubt it because you can't see it. God is in charge. What a blessing to know that God has our well-being and goodness and care thought out and prepared in advance. In closing, I want to share with you a powerful story of deliverance through heavenly angels of God that protected those who are His. There's many, many more stories that you can get on YouTube from Adventist World Radio. If you, how many of you know who Wee Somali is? Have you heard that name before? Okay. You need to go watch some of these videos. It is amazing what God has done with him. And there's even more that I can't say right now, but in the days ahead, you're going to hear some stories that are just, if God weren't involved, I'd really have trouble believing it. But it gives us the confidence that in the days ahead, when we're put in these situations, God, do you remember what you did for the Bible characters? Do you remember what, we did for, what you did for Weesom? God, I sure could use that now. I'm in trouble. Can you help me? We don't have to lie. We can always be honest. And God will do the rest. And there's going to be some really good stories coming out of this. Um, This is a story that recently happened in the Middle East, in the land that Jesus walked during His earthly ministry. Many rejected Him. Even to this day, so many sincere Jews and Arabs do not know the true God of love. It is our work at AWR to bring the light of the gospel to the land of Israel and surrounding Arab countries. Our radio station there is seeing tremendous results both conversions and baptisms, even in Gaza and surrounding countries, including Jordan. Wiesam, our AWR director in Israel, has an amazing testimony of what love and faith and surrender to Jesus and divine intervention through heavenly angels can do for His people. I encourage you to listen and watch those videos. They're really impressive. Let's watch this video about Wiesam's story now. Being born Muslim, Wiesam was taught to hate Christianity. So when his sister decided to become a Christian, he was sent by his family to kill her. But because of a miraculous dream from God, he decided to begin studying the Bible. He soon returned to Nazareth to share his new belief with his family. And his uncle, upon hearing this, 
became very angry and ordered his stoning. This happened over and over until finally his brother stepped in. Then his father advised Wiesem to flee the country. Years later, after his father and uncle died, Wiesem's mother invited him to return. He immediately saw an opportunity to share Jesus in Nazareth. So he decided to set up a center of influence where he used the Bible to teach English to his fellow people. We also gave Wiesem AWR God Pods, which he distributed among his community. Recently though, things took a turn for the worse, as the sons of his dead uncle found out what Wiesem was doing. They too had participated in his stoning many years before, and now rallied a mob and went to Wiesem's house to attack him. Wiesem's wife, Audrey, heard the commotion downstairs and rushed out to see what was happening. She knew right away that Wiesem was in serious trouble and fell on her knees and began to pray. Wiesem's brothers rushed to protect him when he was hit with a metal rod, but then his own cousin pulled out his knife and stabbed Wiesem. But to his astonishment, the knife bent, leaving him unharmed. Wiesem's brother then picked up the bent knife and said, Try again to kill the man of God. As the mob retreated, they threatened, You will not know where or when, but we will kill you. Several months later, Wiesem received a shocking phone call that these same two cousins had been killed while riding their motorcycle. It just reminds me that if God is for us, who can be against us? This miraculous event agitated the Muslim community so much that Wiesem knew it was the perfect time to use AWR's cell phone evangelism. He immediately sought out someone to translate the sermons into Arabic. He found a man named Jamil who readily agreed to help. Jamil worked for days, sometimes late into the night, translating the Bible-based sermons. As he read, he was so greatly moved by the presentations that he felt compelled to share them with one of his friends from the Baptist Church. She was so amazed by the sermons that she shared them with her pastor, who was also impressed by what he read. He then sought out Wiesem to preach at his church. Wiesem presented at the Baptist Church, sharing Bible prophecy, our health message, and Ellen White's writings. Their hearts were so convicted that the pastor and almost his whole congregation made the decision to be baptized into the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And on a beautiful Sabbath day, we held a church service at the Jordan River. Then one by one, they entered into the water. Wiesem had the joy of baptizing these precious souls with Elder Duane McKee. God is calling all who are willing to proclaim his last day message. Adventist World Radio not only broadcasts into the Muslim countries in their own languages, but we are working with people like Wiesem, helping to share the gospel message in countries that still need to hear the wonderful story of Jesus. Thank you for supporting AWR. Jesus is coming soon, and he invites you and me to be a part of this great movement that will light the earth with a knowledge of his truth. From broadcast to baptism, this is AWR 360. Something that God can do. Angels of God are real friends. They are just as powerful and willing to deliver God's remnant church as they were in Jacob's day when God opened his eyes. The second army is waiting for us to accept the charge. Matthew 24, 14 says, And this gospel of the kingdom will pre be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations. Then the end will come. That's every nation in the world. Adventist World Radio has accepted the call with the leading of Christ and support from His angels to cover the earth with the knowledge of Christ's soon return. Let's do this together. Today you've heard stories of ordinary people who God is using to do extraordinary things. I have a question for you. How many of you today are willing to say, Jesus, I recognize that we live late in earth's history. I want to be used by you to bring the gospel to the precious people that I work with, my family members, my co-workers, and even those living on the other side of the world. 
Anyone here want to say, yes, God, you can use me? It's an amazing trip, friends. I've seen and done a lot of things in my life. Nothing compares to walking with God and watching Him open doors and watching Him shut doors, watching Him getting you on the wrong bus. What an amazing ride. Today, God has opened doors for us to have a direct impact on 253 countries and growing fast, and this includes North Korea. This work is, more, is about more than the baptisms. We have had many suicides averted from these broadcasts. We can reach remote places with the good news of God's love. And this is why I love sharing these testimonies, friends. The most powerful witness is a Christian who has been transformed by the power of Jesus. God inspires us to go into all the world proclaiming the Adventist message that Jesus is soon to return. As we close with the challenge of embracing our mission to take the battle to the enemy's gate and receiving our marching orders by putting on the whole armor of God, we are promised by the eternal God of the assurance of victory. Jesus conquered the enemy on his own ground, and we are to do the same with even greater power with the latter rain. We thank you for your prayers and support for Adventist World Radio. Without you and your prayers, we could not do what we are able to do on such a worldwide platform. It's exciting to know that soon we will all be with Jesus when he comes in the clouds of heaven. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Amen. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the Sabbath day. Father, we thank you for your leading and guiding and for your hand of protection. Father, forgive us for the times that we did not realize how close you're watching over us and the times that you've protected us. Thank you for loving us. Father, thank you for the plans that you have for us. Help us to recognize your leading. Help us to go in your strength for your glory. May many be in heaven. Father, show us where your children are. As we leave today, Father, may we not leave your presence. Continue to teach us. Continue to impress upon us more about you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God be with you till we meet again. By his counsels, guide uphold you. With his sheep securely fold you God be with you Till we meet again Till we meet Till we meet Till we meet At Jesus' feet Till we meet Till we meet God be with you till we meet again. God be with you till we meet again. Neath his wings protecting hide you. Daily manna still provide you. God be with you till we meet again till we meet till we meet till we meet at Jesus feet till we meet till we meet God be with you till we meet again